If you've been here on my channel for a while, then you probably have seen my disc setup videos that I've made frequently. I usually do one of them every year because there's always something that is changing on my desk and the most recent one that I posted which is the desk setup tour of 2022 showed that I had two different displays here at my desk that I'm using and I want to talk about these displays and why I decided to invest in these two monitors specifically. If this is your first time watching me, I just want to say welcome to the channel. Hope you're going to enjoy this video. And uh, if you want to subscribe, then you're more than welcome to do that as well. So previously, I did have a ultra-wide 38-inch Dell monitor. But after a uh, kind of clumsy incident here in the office space... Uh, normal mode. Whoa. good just just getting uh, getting into the habit of flying FPV this right here is the reason as to why you should not fly an FPV drone inside no joke it's actually broken just gonna say don't fly a drone inside okay this entire studio space has been very like developing during the time that I've been here and especially this, this disc setup because first it was over here now it's over here now I had two displays or monitors if you may and it has developed into a command center that I enjoy using and using the ultra wide at first was one of those really revolutionary things for me because I got so much screen real estate that I could use so when that monitor broke I kind of had to look for a couple of new ones and the thing that I wanted to have in a new monitor was a true 10-bit color space and it might sound weird if you're not working as a videographer or photographer or within the creative industry, but having true 10-bit colors on your monitor is something that can show your footage, or in my case, my videos, the way that they are actually shot. Because most of the time I'm shooting my videos with a very expensive camera. This is like a almost $10,000 setup that I'm shooting with right now. And to be able to show the footage as it's supposed to look like, you need to have a monitor that can actually show you how all the colors are captured within the camera. And the monitors that I got here in the studio right now are two extremely expensive monitors. The main monitor that I got is a Dell UP 3221Q. And the other one that I got is an LG OLED Ultra Fine 32EP950. The Dell one comes in at around $4,500 here in Sweden. Meanwhile, the LG comes in at $3,500. And you might think to yourself, okay, Peter, those are two freaking expensive monitors. Why did you end up with those? First thing, I got a really good deal on both of these. So I managed to snag both of these for a total of $4,000, entirely new. And I was scouring through the different monitors that was available online and eventually I ended up with these two mainly because they had the best kind of reviews that I could find online and they had the best comparisons when I tried a bunch of different monitors out. But when it comes to using these two monitors, there is a big difference. The main reason that the Dell is my main monitor that I'm doing most of my work on in this setup is because the brightness and the color accuracy on this one. Just when you start out, out of the box, it calibrates itself. You don't have to do anything to it. It just starts out as a built-in calibration tool that just like then fixes everything on the display. Meanwhile, on the LG, you kind of have to go into the menus. You got to fiddle around, adjust the colors, adjust the hues and that kind of stuff, which makes it a little bit tedious to get the same look on both displays. It is kind of possible, but there's always something that's gonna be slightly off. The second thing 
is that this monitor, the Dell one, is incredibly bright. It has 2000 LEDs that are lighting up the pixels from the back. Meanwhile, the OLED has individually lit up pixels and cannot provide the same brightness as the Dell can do. And I don't think that the difference is that big when you're sitting with them separately, but when you have them side by side, that is when you can see the huge difference. So when you turn the brightness to the max on the Dell, you can definitely see that it goes up incredibly bright because the Dell display can provide you with peak brightness of 1000 nits. So when you're basically sitting here reading news on this display, it kind of burns in your eyes because the white backgrounds of the news websites. But it's also very good when you're working with it, when you're doing these like super heavy color grading where you have a lot of shadows and you have a lot of brights, then you can really see the difference that the brightness does to your footage when you're working with it. And when you have it side by side with the OLED display, you can also see the difference in the footage and how much more accurate it feels on the Dell display as well. When it comes to the color accuracy of both displays, I think it works well. It looks good on both of them. And I think they have a kind of a similar tone, but it would be better to have two similar displays put next to each other. But one thing that makes it good to have two different displays is that I can check the footage on both of them and see if it looks good on both of the displays. And if it does that, then it probably will look good on any other display that shows my content. To come to a conclusion between these two displays, I will say that the Dell is miles ahead than the LG in my opinion. But would I recommend you to go out and buy a monitor for this amount of money? Well, no. For most users, having a monitor like this is gonna be way overkill. But it's also one of those things that I felt that I want to have in order to make my work more enjoyable. Because I am working with this every day. I'm sitting by this computer, editing footage every single day. So for me, it is definitely worthwhile investment moving into the future and where I wanna take my business. But if you are not making any money or if you're not working as a color retail or anything like that, I cannot simply defend the price that you pay for these two displays. I would definitely go for something cheaper. But I would love to know, do you have any questions about these displays? If you do, drop them down below and I'm gonna to try to get back to you. Uh, I just want to share my opinions on these after using them for a little bit more than four months and uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Peter van Sweden is saying goodbye.